Import titles are a struggle, especially when they're made in another language. And they're based on an anime. That never made it to North America. Starring a red-headed, mini-skirt-wearing, ghost huntress named... <coughs> oh, right. I have to be on my best behavior today. Ladies and gentlemen, my fiancé. Hi, guys. Here's the intro. Wait, that's my job! Today's game may be unfamiliar territory to most, so let's get involved with some backstory, shall we? Roll the clip! Ghost Sweeper Mikame was an anime series in Japan that was a strange mix between Ghostbusters and Ghost Whisperer. It was an enjoyable mix of horror comedy meets harem anime, filled with cute girls and evil monsters. The main cast was mostly comprised of three characters. Kinyu, a female ghost who died a long time ago when she was sacrificed to a volcano and who doesn't know how to pass on. Tadeo Yokoshima, a teenager who's girl crazy and underpaid as an assistant to our main character, the beautiful but powerful ghost sweeper herself, Reiko Mikami. Anyways, Mikame is a ghost sweeper who is hired by companies to exercise the ghosts that lurk in their facilities. Sometimes she would take them down Ghostbusters style, but with various magical items. And other times she would help the tortured souls accomplish something that would set them free. Hence the comparison to both Ghostbusters and Ghost Whisperer. Only Jennifer Love Hewitt is replaced by this fiery haired... Moving on. As the show went on, it introduced more characters, and with 45 episodes and a movie, there's plenty of visual content to enjoy. But what does this have to do with video games? Everything! Because today's game is based on the manga and anime of the same name. The game's full name is Ghost Sweeper Mikame, Joreshi wa Nice Body. This game's title knows what I'm thinking. What? The game doesn't lie? Ugh, okay, I'm not gonna win this one. The game was released in 1993 by publisher Banalex and developed by Natsume. Sadly, the game only received a release in Japan as the anime never received a dubbed or subtitled English version other than what's on the internet. Despite the lack of the source material in other countries, the game has a deceptively easygoing feel to it that both helps and hinders regarding the finished product. Is Ghost Sweeper Mikame worth importing? Let's take a look. Bypassing the title screen leads to the options menu, which, strangely, is entirely in English. It makes me feel that they were possibly trying to make the game easy to port over to Western Shores, but sadly, it was not in this game's future. The game is broken up into seven levels called Reports. In between each one is a short cutscene showcasing some of the humor the show is known for, and also details your next mission. As far as I can tell, the game's plot involves acquiring gems after defeating the bosses of each level. Each one is then placed in a statue that you received from this guy, whom I can only assume is a friend of yours. This gives the statue back a piece of its essence, which may or may not be a good thing. I'll leave that to those of you who will play through the game to see what I mean. I really want to know what's going on in this game, but because it's completely in Japanese, it makes it difficult. Luckily, you won't need to know any Japanese to make decisions, as there are no decisions to be made in the game. So as long as you feel comfortable skipping the cutscenes, you're not missing much. Just some weird, awkward scenes of her or two cohorts getting in her way. I must be missing something here. You only play as Reiko Mikami, which makes sense as she's the main character of the show. Time to get ready to... Ow. Oh, get hurt. 
The game's controls are very tight and responsive, with the standard directional pad movement controlling Reiko. She attacks with her main weapon in the show, a sword-like baton that is magic-infused. She can swipe normal by pressing Y, or by pressing up and Y to attack enemies just above you. Power-ups can be picked up and used to either return health by eating cake, or by giving projectile power to your attacks. Once you are hit, however, your power returns to normal. These power-ups all do the same thing concept-wise, yet have differences in terms of how they reach out to attack. Some are straight shot lightning bolts, others protrude out in a V-shape, attacking above and below you. By pressing up and attack while jumping, you can latch onto special platforms that have special cloth hanging from them with the circle designs. This allows you to reach higher destinations, and even is a secondary form of attack. While this is fun to do, one of the later levels abuses the ability by making it so Reiko has less gravity during jumps, but this occurs only when the background color changes. It gets to the point where you want to move onwards, as this becomes very repetitive. A small but forgiving part of the game that will frustrate for a short time, but I recommend pushing onward as it's one of the last moments of the game. With that said, the biggest challenge in the game is the misleading feeling of a lack of difficulty. I know that sounds strange, but this game is deceptively simple. It's not easy going to the point where you won't die if you don't try, but it almost feels like it's difficult to get hit unless you're being sloppy or not paying attention. Though later levels will prove to increase the difficulty, it just feels a bit hollow when compared to other games in the action genre. I'd compare it to one of Natsume's other offerings in the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Super Nintendo games. It makes you feel as if there's no challenge, but taking that to your advantage could be your downfall. It's a very strange feeling. Not bad, just strange. There are branching paths in the game, which break up the monotony of the levels. While these sometimes lead to rewards such as extra lives, the game has unlimited continues, so even if you lose all your lives, you just go back to the beginning of the level instead of the checkpoint. This can be frustrating if you die at the boss of the level, but the levels are short enough that it isn't that much of a problem. There are parts of the game where I feel like I should be able to go to a specific place, or that there's more to explore than what I'm seeing, but it usually just leads me down a path to either death or disappointment. Follow the paths given and don't try to overcomplicate what you see, as there isn't much to discover. Power-ups are plentiful, and while this helps achieve victory, it also hinders the difficulty a bit by giving players too many chances to succeed and make up for mistakes. There's also power-ups that you can enable by pressing your magic button, causing the enchanted strips to begin sucking up enemies in addition to stopping bosses for a short period of time. It works great on projectile attacks and smaller enemies that are a bigger nuisance to kill. Later levels ramp up the difficulty by making the stages themselves more difficult to go through, and while some of the enemies kinda come out of nowhere in the game, I think one of the reasons the game felt easy at first is that health was always around for me to collect, and enemies were mostly one-hit kills. Maybe I'm just jaded after playing games like Shatterhand and Ninja Gaiden, where the difficulty is just completely brutal and health power-ups are a rare occurrence. Who knows? What I do know is that I wish all girls could eat cake and look as good as Ryoko Mikami. Aww. While the visuals here don't necessarily take too much advantage of the Super Nintendo special features such as Mode 7, the colors are gorgeous. The levels can at times be a bit on the bland side, but the characters themselves give the experience of watching an episode of the anime show. There's plenty of subtle nods to Reiko's constantly changing attire, with her always wearing the same dress but receiving a palette swap in each level, same as the show's episodes. The cutscenes show off some really rich, vibrant hues, as well as some impressive shadowing. The flying level is probably the most gorgeous background of the game, with the sun going down reflecting off of the clouds. Enemies are creative and fun to attack, such as the mud monsters, undead zombies, possessed train carts, and... uh... Playboy bunny models? Even the end bosses in each level are unique and fresh. The game doesn't take itself too seriously, and that's a good thing. There's also a bit of variety regarding the level styles that changes up the gameplay a bit. Unfortunately, the intentions of breaking up the monotony of the action tend to be mostly weak and stiff. There's a level where Reiko gets shrunken down and has to ride a cat to the other end of the level. This is probably the strongest of the different unique styles the game showcases, aside from the main core of gameplay that the standard side-scrolling levels provide. There's also a level where Reiko rides a broomstick. Hey! I didn't even say anything then! But you were thinking it. True. 
This portion of the game feels more like a shoot 'em up than the other levels before it, but the moving mechanisms are very stiff, and you may feel like Reiko will not move as fast as you'd like her to. No pun intended! No pun intended, I swear! This leads to some frustration, as you're not only unable to move quickly, but your attack seems slower as well. As I mentioned earlier, there's a level where you collect a power-up that lets you create platforms to traverse across, but this leads to some frustrating platforming that results often enough in death. Does that make the game unfair? Not at all. Should these play styles be included though? Absolutely. I think despite the unpolished nature of these levels, they are still really fun to play through and add challenge, albeit the wrong kind of challenge that requires precision that the game just simply can't provide. Reiko's just better at sticking to her basic nature of jumping and attacking. As far as soundtracks go, the game credits Kinyo Yamashita for the main composer, and while I don't hear too much in the vein of Castlevania or the Power Blade games, it's full of bright, cheery synths and competent drums that feel perfect for the tone of the game. Yamashita has always done well with matching atmosphere to tone musically, and with this game's soundtrack, it's no different. Not something I'd probably rock out to, but definitely a solid track listing worth throwing on from time to time. Ghost Sweeper Makame is a ton of fun, and though the game struggles when trying to change things up, the core mechanics of the game ring true to fans of the show. I'd highly suggest watching a few episodes of the anime first so you can get a sense of the personalities of the characters so it makes a bit more sense. Otherwise, this is an import-friendly title that can be picked up if you have modified your Super Nintendo. If not, and you're like me and dislike cutting those plastic tabs on the inside, a reproduction cart does exist at various online sites. So yeah, Ghost Sweeper Makame is a recommendation. And yeah, I've got a bit of a thing for redheads. I just don't tell my fiance. You were saying? Sweet!